Hey everyone, I hope you are all doing well. In today's video, we are going to talk about CSS media queries, which is an important part of responsive web design. In the past, websites had a static view only for computers, but today we can visit websites from smartphones, tablets, any kind of devices, and even TVs. So the layout of websites needed to be adapted to these devices. And this approach is called responsive web design. And by using media queries, we can add additional CSS selectors or rewrite them based on some conditions so we can make changes in the layout. Now let's jump into code and see how to use media queries. Here we have a simple text with a background color and this looks exactly the same in any kind of devices. Now let's say we want to change the font size and the background color of this text for mobile devices. For that, we need to use a media query. The syntax of media queries may seem complicated at the beginning, that's why I will explain it one by one. So here, firstly, we need to declare our first media query rule with at media. After that, we define a media type, screen for example, and this is a keyword. There are actually four keywords for media types, all for all kinds of devices, screen, for desktops, tablets, and smartphones, print for printers, and speech for screen readers. Or if you leave this empty and directly assign a rule, then by default, it will be applied to all meta types. After defining the meta type, we can declare our first rule, I mean the condition. And to do that, first of all, we need to concatenate it with the AND keyword, and then we open a parenthesis and here inside the parenthesis we can declare our condition and these conditions can be anything but mostly we use min width or max width so let's say i will take a maximum width and then i need to define its breakpoint 480 pixels for example so this is our breakpoint and this can be any kind of value and after that, we open curly braces and inside the curly braces, we can write our CSS rules. But this cannot be like giving directly a rule like color red here. This is not going to work. Instead of writing directly a rule, we need to define here a CSS selector. Let's take the div, for example. And I want to change the background color, let's say to blue. And I want to change the font size of the text to 18 pixels. So when we have a device has a maximum width of 480 pixels or less than that, then these selectors will be overwritten and these selectors will be applied. So let's see. Now you can see the web page and the Chrome developer tools on the right side. And the Chrome developer tools has a nice feature. So when I click on this button, we see that we can toggle the device toolbar which shows us the same web page in different kinds of devices. And to understand how our changes looks in other devices, you can select the responsive option. And it's a little bit dark here, but you can drag the width and the height of the page by yourself. Now I am dragging the responsive web page up to 480. And let's see if our changes has applied. Okay, now as we can see, the width is smaller than 480 and our rules have applied. Now, if I make the width larger than 480, we see that the old rules have applied. So this is how it works. Furthermore, there are also other devices here and you can choose, for example, one of the devices, let's say iPhone 5 standard edition. And this will take exactly the width and the height of an iPhone 5 device. And you can see your changes, how it would look if you had an iPhone 5 device. Let's also choose iPad, for example. If I go to iPad, now you see that we have a larger width. And if I go back to our code, the condition here doesn't match. So these selectors won't be applied. Let's try this on other conditions. For example, I will change this to minimum width. And this time we should see that any kind of device has a width of minimum 480 pixels. We'll take these rules. Otherwise, they won't. So let's see. Now, when I make this smaller than 480, we see that this time we have a gray background for 
smaller devices and a blue background for larger devices. Let's try another example. There is also a condition which is called orientation and this has two values landscape and portrait. If I write here landscape this means that when a device has a larger width number than a height then the rules will be applied. Or we can change this to the portrait and this time when the width is smaller than the height rules will be applied otherwise it won't. Before ending the video there is one more important thing that I would like to mention. The media queries that we define must always be at the end of our CSS files because CSS reads rules from top to down and if I define the media queries at the beginning of the file and then write the other rules we can see that our rules won't be applied because first CSS reads these rules and apply them but after that CSS reads these rules again and apply this one so our media query won't take any effect that's why we should always define our media queries at the end of the page that's very important so media queries are a very important feature of responsive web design and if you are working as a front-end developer you must know how to use media queries responsive web design is a broader topic and i may make other videos about it uh, in the future if you find my video useful, please like it and share on social media. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more related videos. See you later guys and thank you for watching.